we're live. Um, and by live, I mean pre-recorded for you to watch. Um, hey, everybody. My name is Ryan, and I'm here to do the Grounded Journal this week. Uh, this week, we are in week 11. And so if you're with us, that we have finished the book of Numbers. We've started the book of Deuteronomy this week. And so I'm here to kind of share with you what the Lord really highlighted for me and what I've learned in my reading of this week. And so um, the big thing that stood out to me this week is two things. One, that the beginning of Deuteronomy is just like a really um, Cliff Notes version of what's been happening for the nation of Israel. It's a quick summary. It sums it up really well. You get a, the highlights of everything that's been happening um, in just a couple of chapters. So it's really cool to kind of go back and read and be reminded of the more in detail stories um, back in Genesis and Numbers. But the thing that really stood out to me was in, in Deuteronomy 1, as you read, you see the story of the spies again, where Moses got the spies, they went and looked at the promised land, and they came back and they said, hey, we can't do this. We're, we're not going to be able to go in here. They're too big. They're, they've got too many cities. You know, we, we're, we will not be able to do this. And yet, Caleb and Joshua said, you know, God is faithful. He says he'll do this. He'll do it like we can do it. But we know that the nation of Israel doesn't listen to Caleb and Joshua. They listen to the other spies, and they say, we're not going into the promised land. Well, then Moses, um, he, he is hurt by this. And then um, look, look, verse 34, this is what the Lord says. When the Lord heard your words, he grew angry and swore an oath. None of these men in this evil generation will see the good land that I swore to give your fathers, except Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, he will see it, and I will give him and his descendants the land on which he has set foot, because he remained loyal to the Lord. And so we see that there's punishment because Israel has disobeyed. They've doubted God's faithfulness. They've said, hey, look, we know that you said that you'll be with us in entering this promised land, but we doubt it, and we don't think we can do it, so we're not going in. And because of that, God says, nobody of this generation will enter into the promised land. Because there is still consequences for sin, for disobedience, for being unfaithful to the Lord. And so after they hear this, um, Moses keeps talking to them. In uh, verse 39, your children whom you said would be plundered, your sons who don't yet know good from evil will enter there. I will give them the land and I will take possession of it. But you are to turn back and head for the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. So Moses says, look, you complain that your kids would be trampled and plundered if you entered. Those ones you were afraid of, they're going to be able to conquer the promised land. And so, and so Moses even you like tells these people that, hey, God's going to use your excuse as the means to conquer the promised land and to get the nation of Israel in there. But here is what really, really stood out to me, kind of setting up the story. In verse 41, the people of Israel turn back to Moses and they say, We have sinned against the Lord. We will go up and we will fight just as the Lord our God commanded us. Then each of you put on his weapons of war and thought it would be easy to go up into the hill country. And here's what stood out to me. Verse 42 of Deuteronomy 1. But the Lord said to me, Tell them, don't go up and fight, for I am not with you to keep you from being defeated by your enemies. If you finish reading the rest of Deuteronomy 1, then you see they got demolished. I mean, they got straight up swizzle swacked. I mean, it was like Mississippi State against Alabama in football this past year. And I'm a State fan. Uh, it's not good, right? It's not good at all. And that's exactly what happened to the nation of Israel. They were completely demolished by these people. But if you're reading this like I was, the thought that came to my mind, but God, you promised him the, the promised land. That was the goal. And now they understand. Now you are like, go back and listen. But in verse 41, they said, we have sinned. We will go up and fight just as the Lord has told us. Like, it seems like they've connected. But as I kept reading, I see that God is not with them. And the reason God is not with them is because they're not really with God. Because if you go back again, they've doubted. They're unfaithful. They were disobedient. And because of that, there has to be consequences. You know, sometimes I think that if we forget there's consequences for sin, that when we do wrong, there's still consequences. We have to, to pay the price. But what is beautiful, and as we read this, is that we're reminded that Jesus paid the ultimate price. 
that while there's still hardships on earth, while there's still things that we must go through, and while sometimes when we make mistakes, there, there are consequences, there are punishments that we face on earth, that there is not an eternal punishment, that Jesus paid that, that we could be set free. And so practically, looking at this, what I take away is to be reminded of the importance to not just do good things and not see if the Lord is leading me in that direction. I know so often in my life, whether it's just personally or whether it's in ministry, there are times where I think, man, this is a really great idea. I'm going to do this. Or, hey, uh, I mean, this this seems legit. This seems cool. Let's, let's run after this. Let's do this thing. Let's plan this event. And yet I never stop to say, God, where are you leading me? God, what would you have me to do? God, would you give me the ideas? Would you give me the energy? Would you give me the resources to accomplish this? It's almost like I plan everything out and then I look to God and go, hey, does that look good to you? Instead of saying, okay, God, here's here's a blank piece of paper. Help me to see what you want me to do. And I think just that, that change of priority, that change of perspective really hits home with me. That even though they tried to do what God asked them to do, their hearts weren't in it. They It, it was almost like they weren't doing it to uh, because of God's faithfulness, they were doing it because they didn't want to suffer the consequences. Like they were like, okay, well, if you're saying my kids are going to go in there, then like I want to lead my kids into the promised land. They missed the point. And so as I read this, as I looked at verse 42, I'm reminded to stop, to not take things into my own hand, and to listen to the Lord, and to realize that if He's not there, if He's not fighting, it's going to be utter defeat because I can't do anything on my own. I can't do anything. In my own strength, all I can do is rely on the strength of the Lord. And that's it's funny that, you know, that's something God's been teaching me lately. Um, I don't know if I can move this without it going crazy. But right above my office up there, let me see if I can get it up there. I have a verse um, up there, and it is basically saying my sufficiency is not in myself. Uh, my sufficiency is from God. Um, shout out to Lauren Weeks for painting that for me and putting it in my office. Um, but that was me this week, Ryan getting grounded. Just a, a reminder that if God's not in it, we can't do it. We have to rely on Him not to do things in our own strength, but to be reminded that through Jesus, He has provided complete freedom from sin, from the eternal punishment of sin uh, through His Son. Because He is just and He gave us His Son to pay the price for our sin. I hope that encourages you today as much as it did me when I read it. God bless.